feel alive. What's going on? I have no memories of anything before this point in time. My mind is tabula rasa, yet I have a language. I seem to be in some laboratory of sorts. Maybe I can find out what happened if I look around. There's a screwdriver in this toolbox. Better take it. There's a handwritten note here. Maybe it can shed some light on my situation. expensive. Let's waste it. Ooh, surgical tools. Shiny. The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able to unscrew these hinges, though. I smeared some oil on the rusty screws. That should loosen them up. The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able to unscrew these hinges, though. I'm free! Another piece of paper. This was written long before the last one. There's a long stick here. Perhaps it was used to try to chase away rats when trying to sleep. More writings from the lonely doctor. Another locked door. Let's take a peek through. Attach the magnet to the end of the stick. It's the key I'm after. I can't reach it with my hands. I wonder what I can invent to retrieve it. Let's hope this works. Haha! Just as planned. I got the basement key. Let's unlock this door. Let's unlock this door. More letters. Has he figured it out yet? of cogwheels on the floor. They must have fallen off the mechanism when the door slammed shut. I wonder if I can put them back. Not yet.
The doctor is losing it. He's just scribbling down nonsense by now. What will he do if he ever acts on his wild suspicions? This story is so sad. I don't even know if I want to read this one. A beautiful china bowl. It looks hand-painted. It's a mortar. And a pestle, too. They seem to belong here, but I'll remember where they are in case I need them another time. A big and heavy candlestick. It looks like there used to be two of them. It's the body of Dr. Von Trauerschloss. He's dead. And what's more, he's been murdered. But who could have done this? There must be some clues around. The body is still warm. He cannot have been dead for much longer than I have been alive. Did he have to die for me to live? The missing candlestick, and it seems to be the murder weapon. The back of his head has been cracked open by a heavy blow. He couldn't have seen the attack coming. He was dead before he knew what happened. So, he trusted his assailant then? Was it me? I have no memories from my life before. Maybe it was I who killed him. But then, how was I brought back? There's something in his pocket. It's a small, delicate key. He kept it in the pocket closest to his heart. I wonder what it unlocks. There's a letter clutched in his hand. His final words? Or a clue left by the killer. This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of this story. There's a bottle of milk out here. I wonder how long it's been here. At any rate, it's frozen completely solid. No wonder in this cold. One more Belladonna letter. Let's read about this Clara figure. A note. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. More letters. Can someone tell me what happened to poor Clara? This lantern might prove to be the very first thing that actually manages to shed some light on my situation. I'll keep it. <laughs> Belladonna. This little plant has caused a lot of trouble. For a flower, it's not particularly beautiful, but for a murder weapon, it sure is. Look, a journal page was hiding behind the plant.
another journal page. This one has drops of blood on it. The doctor's handwriting. I know it well by now. I'm not going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it somehow if I want to proceed. Let it stand by the fire for a while. It's thawed. The milk is now in liquid form. The milk pours easily. grind this plant into powder. Is this how Clara died? going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it somehow if I want to proceed. Yes, this should put an end to the grim reign of this beast. This is strange. This is Belladonna's signature, but the handwriting is just wrong. It's a key, and it has a funny tassel attached to it. No wonder the cat wanted to play with it. The animal must have managed to steal a key somehow. Let's take a look inside. Coils of rope. I wonder why we're keeping rope in the bedroom. I wonder if this key fits. There's a key hidden inside. A very important one. Clara, it really is you. I was so certain I'd never see you again. You didn't wake up. I... I woke up. I've been wandering lost ever since, trying to find out what's going on. How are you feeling? Do you remember me? I have no memories of you, or of myself. But I found some notes lying around. 
I can only assume you're the one called Belladonna. I am Belladonna, murdered and reanimated by Dr. Von Trauerschloss. At first a mindless mechanical doll, but I slowly regained control over my brain. And when the time was right, I broke free. I saw the doctor's body. Yes, I crushed his skull. Standing over his blood-soaked remains, I was free at last. But where did I come from? If he was dead, was it you who brought me back? Yes, my love. You were the only thing on my mind as I stood there, alone and victorious. I had secretly watched the doctor's process, and I desperately wanted to believe that I could get you back. I unearthed your grave and carried your dead body down to the laboratory. I did everything right, to the smallest detail, but you didn't wake up. And my time was running out. I can't turn my own key, and now that I was alone in the castle, I knew my life force would run out quickly. But for all my effort, you remained dead, and with no one to keep me vital, I eventually sat down here and just stopped. But I did wake up. Yes, apparently you did. Your body had been in the ground for quite some time. Perhaps that made the reanimation process slower. But with your key powering your brain directly, you did not have to go through the drawn-out sluggish wake-up. I take it your cognitive powers and language have been with you from the start. Well, yes. Excellent. Then I have even improved on the doctor's method. But I doubt independent thinking and free will was ever in his interest to reproduce. Do you think you could do it again? Create more of us, you mean? Yes, I hold the secret of life and death, and I plan to use it. The experimentations must continue. And the two of us will have no place in this world. Quite right. So, we'll make us a place. Dead bodies will never be in short supply. We'll make more of our kind. A whole new race of the damned. Where do we start? I know for a fact that there's a fresh body lying out there in the Great Hall. The Doctor? His flesh, at least. We won't be using his wretched brain. I've already destroyed it in any case. But the body will do. We will have to find a few other ingredients. Will you help me? I... of course I will. Thank you, my love. I'll carry the body down to the laboratory and start with the preparations. And in the meantime, you can help me with a few other things. The doctor's brain is completely destroyed. I made sure of that. I don't think any of us want his villainous brain back amongst us. We're going to need to find a new one. Secondly, we will also need some clockwork parts. We have to manufacture a force to keep the dead body going. Thirdly, not only the brain, but also the head and the cranium were damaged. If we can find a new head, that would save a lot of reconstructing effort. I saw a brain preserved in alcohol down in the laboratory. Oh, you did? That's good. That, my dear, is the brain of baby Lucas. Your son? Lucas was never buried. The doctor had the body cremated very quickly and thus incinerated all the evidence that the corpse was not complete. He had stolen the brain and kept it for himself. I don't know what he claimed about not planning on resurrecting his child, but the truth is that he kept the brain all the same. And now you want your child back? No, my dear. It's just a brain. I wanted you back, so I took great care to preserve your personality. But this brain is young, and has been dead for very long. I suppose the creation will be my child, in a way, but not my son Lucas. Clockwork? Yes. We need something to supply the body with the force to move. We can't make the heart beat again, so we use the spring-loaded clockwork. In the future, we'll have to think of a source of parts more reliable than salvaging old time pieces, but that'll do for now. I see. Thank you. Will we need to find a fresh human head? Yes, I've smashed up the head of Wolfram rather frivolously. I'm afraid it's beyond rescue. I was thinking of my grandmother, Francesca Canosa. I'm sure you've seen her portrait in the study. She was buried some time ago, but her cranium should be sufficiently preserved. She rests in the mausoleum in the cemetery outside, but there is a hidden way into the tomb behind the armor in the basement. Your grandmother? 
Will it not cause problems to attach a woman's head to a man's body? No, I don't see how it would make any difference in this new race of ours. We do not even reproduce sexually, so not even that significance is relevant. What do you mean we don't reproduce sexually? How do you know? I spent quite some time with Wolfram dead and mindless, you know. I can safely say that, though we do experience all the physical sensations of intercourse, we cannot become pregnant or bear children. I see. I'll go take a look behind the suit of armor. Thank you. Some things have been puzzling me. Did I used to have hair? You had beautiful hair. Unfortunately, I had to shave it all off in order to operate on your head and open your cranium. Yet, you're not bald. I was revivified directly after my death, when my body was still fresh. You, my dear, had been in the ground for quite some time. I had to reconstruct large parts of your decomposed corpse. That explains the metal construction holding together my skull. I have my fair share of screws and bolts myself, but they are carefully hidden. I opted to sacrifice your pretty hair so that I could work more on preserving your brain. Something the good doctor did not do for me. Will it grow back? I... I don't rightly know. Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. What is this I'm wearing? I'm so sorry about that. I covered you in scraps and bandages I found in the laboratory. I had to cut open and discard most of what you were buried in, in order to stitch you up. I want you to know that my plan was to be right next to you when you woke up, to help you understand and to find a proper dress. I'm so sorry it didn't come to pass like that. On my way in here, I killed a cat. It was in my way and it felt so natural to just dispose of it. It worries me a bit. How so? I may have a functional brain, but what about a... a soul? Shouldn't there be something in me stopping me from hurting others? Or at least making me feel bad about it? You're right. It did come very natural for me to murder my husband. But I'm not too worried about this. I have no desire to commit unnecessary killings, and I do have control over my actions. What if you're raising an army of cold-hearted mass murderers? They won't be mass murderers any more than you and I. And besides, why should we prioritize the lives of the living above the lives of the dead? I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. Why did you put this wind-up mechanism in my head? Yours is in your back. Yes, the damned doctor had placed my wind-up mechanism in my back. It goes straight into my chest and heart, giving me a strong central of power. But it is placed outside my own reach. So, you can't turn it yourself? No, I can't. I have to depend on others. That's why I chose to put the key in the back of your head, well within reach of your own hands. I know what it means to not be in control of your own existence, and I will never put someone else in the situation I'm in. Thank you. Of course. I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. Some things have been puzzling me. I'll start looking for the objects then. Thank you. Come talk to me if there's something you're unsure about. I see a lot of mechanical parts in there. I need to get them out somehow. This faithful screwdriver will do the trick. Time to turn this old clock into a slightly peculiar wardrobe.
Belladonna was right. There is a secret switch behind this suit of armor. I'll just tie this rope to the lantern. Yes, I can lower the lantern into the hole. Amazing. I must be directly underneath the mausoleum and the cemetery. I can't believe it. It's another letter. How did it end up down here? Here's Francisca's coffin, but the lid is much too heavy for me to lift. Maybe I could break it open? But I'll need some sort of big hammer or mace for that. The things one does for love. Now to carefully remove the head. It's remarkably well preserved. Are you the third sibling? What did you do to get put down here? Is your name Gwendolyn? of a deranged murderer, the decomposed head of an old lady, the brain of a small child. How could this possibly go wrong? Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. The creation is complete. All we need to do now is force life into these dead limbs. That big switch on the wall initiates the procedure. Will you have the honor, my dear? Gladly. The time has come. I've wanted to pull this thing since the first time I saw it. Thank <laughs> you.